Hi and welcome back. We've talked about IP addresses and domain names in previous lessons. You've learned how important they are. IP addresses are what are required for packets to be transmitted through the internet. But IP addresses, those strange looking numbers, are hard for humans to remember. We're more comfortable remembering domain names like trincal.edu. So there needs to be a system to translate domain names into IP addresses so that they can be used to route packets. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. And after this brief presentation, we're going to then move on to a simulation that uses a mobile app that we've created to simulate the domain name system. And we're going to let you play with that. So let's begin. Currently, the IP address version is called IPv4. It uses a 32-bit dotted decimal notation shown here. So these are decimals. And if you took their binary representation, it would look like this. So this is 8 bits in each case. So that's four 8-bit bytes, or 32 total bits. That gives you 2 to the 32 possible IP addresses, which is enough to support more than 4 billion hosts. The problem is we're running out of IP addresses, especially with all the mobile devices coming online and now the Internet of Things coming online. We need a, a bigger IP address. So IP version 6 is moving to a 128-bit address, and it represents it in hexadecimal notation as shown here. So in this example, you can see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 parts. Each part is a hexadecimal number, a four-digit hex number, which corresponds to 16 bits. So 16 times 8 gives you 128 bits. And if you have 128 bits, then you can make 2 to the 128 possible IP addresses. That's an enormous number. So we won't be running out of IP addresses anytime soon, if ever. You can look up your IP address using some tools that are available online. Here I'm using whatip.com to look up the IP address of my laptop. I did this at home. It's important to note that the IP address is assigned to your device by your service provider. So my service provider is Cox Communications, and they're located in Johnston, Rhode Island. And this is the IP address they've assigned to my laptop. And when you do that, you on your laptop, you get to see a little map of where the service provider is located. You can also do this for your mobile device. Here I'm doing it for my tablet. And notice that the IP address is the same. So it's the same for my tablet as it is for my laptop. And the reason for that is this is the IP address of, of the router in my house. The router then is responsible for finding the different devices connected to it. And in my case, my laptop and my tablet, it takes care of that in a local area network. What if I'm not on Wi-Fi? Well, here's another picture. This time I'm using my phone. I'm using it from home, but it's not connected to the Wi-Fi, and so it's using the mobile network. And now my IP address is different, and it's being assigned by AT&T. Now let's talk about the domain name system. Domain names are organized into a hierarchy, as shown in this example. So this is a site for the Russian version of Wikipedia. And as you can see, it's a hierarchical system. The root is just simply the dot. The highest level of the hierarchy are names like org and edu and com. And at the next level, you have Wikipedia. And then below that, you have ru. In general, a, a domain name takes the following form. There's the top level, second level, third level, fourth level. If we use it with our familiar example of trincal.edu, then trincal.edu gives you the two top level parts of the domain name. If I'm talking about the CS department's local network, then that's cs.trincal.edu. And if I go down even further to one of my computers, the one in my office, called turing.cs.trincal.edu. So that's a domain name for a particular host or particular computer on the internet. Top level domain names like edu, by the way, do not have IP addresses. They're not connected to any particular computer. You need at least two to find an actual computer on the internet. A host name is the domain name associated with an IP address. These are all examples of legitimate host names. And they're legitimate if they have an assigned IP address. 
the domain name service is responsible for mapping domain names or translating domain names into IP addresses as shown in this table. And what that means is that there's a collection of servers also organized into a hierarchy that perform the translation for us using what are called routing tables. So a routing table is simply a lookup table where you look for the domain name and you find the corresponding IP address and that's the information you return when a request is made to look up a domain name. Here's a simple example. Remember this happens in a hierarchy so it could take several attempts, several lookups, before you actually find a translation of the domain name. If I'm on a computer at Trinity then I'm going to use a domain name server at Trinity to look up www.wikipedia.org. But if it doesn't have it, it will refer me to a, another name server. So notice that it's telling me to try this name server as my next try. So my computer will go out and try that one. And if that doesn't find it in its routing table, it'll send me to yet a third one and so on until the domain name is resolved and then it returns the IP address of www.wikipedia.org. So that's how the domain service works. It's a service provided at the TCP level and it uh, is necessary to perform these operations whenever you want to access a, a web page on the internet. All right, so now we're ready for our simulator. Now that you understand what the domain name system is and how it works, we're gonna have you perform some interesting experiments with it and it'll help deepen your understanding of how this all works. Have fun.